This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So today we're going to take a look at how you can create some fancy 3D text in vPython. This kind of reminds me of word art from back in the day when the way you really wanted to spruce up a written document was with some word art. Um, this is using vPython's uh, text function, which is pretty straightforward to use. You just use the text function. You tell it what string you want it to uh, to use. So here we've got Let's Code Physics. Notice I've got this in quotation marks so that Python knows that I am using a string and not variables. Uh, you set that equal to text over here. So it's kind of weird. You're using the function text and it has a variable inside called text. Uh, don't worry about it too much. It, it knows the difference uh, of you using the same thing twice. And then you can use a color here. Here we've selected a nice Let's Code Physics blue. And so your text appears here in 3D. You can see it rotates around. It's a little bit different than the label object because the label is text that's kind of overlaid onto the screen. This is actually a 3D environment here in 3D space. Um, let's take a look at some of the options you have with this. The first thing I want to look at is the position because right now this thing is anchored down here in the center, uh, which makes the rotation kind of weird. It would be nice if I could get it to rotate about the middle here. So first let's do that the hard way by changing this thing's position. So let's try position equals vector. Uh, I don't know how wide this is. Let's go with, uh, let's see, I want to move it to the left. So let's go negative three, zero, zero. Let's see if that is enough. Press Control 2 to run. Okay, that works decently well. It looks like it's centered around here. I want it to move a little bit more, so let's try a negative 600. And you see I'm having to guess and correct on this because the position is determining where the left side is as opposed to where the center is. And so when I'm rotating it, uh, now I'm rotating about the center of the screen, I've almost got this thing centered in the screen. The easier way to do that though, if I want this thing to be centered about the origin, is to give it a position of zero, zero, zero. Right now that's going to move it back to where it was before because again, by default, the position is measured from here. But if you use the align option, you can say align equals center. And now, kind of like what you do in a word processor when you say, uh, when you click on the center alignment button, it's going to take this text because it's, it's thinking of this text as a, as a compounded object, and it's gonna measure that position from wherever the center of that compounded object is. So now if I press Control 2, now this thing is centered at the origin, right? So this thing has, has aligned itself to the origin and it flips around exactly centered uh, in the uh, center of this object, right? So it takes into account you know, how wide each of these letters is, and so it finds the center point of that, and that becomes the thing's position, which is pretty cool. Now, of course, this doesn't look the best. It's kind of broad. I'm, 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 I've got a lot of extra blank space above and below, so it might be nice if I could get this into two lines. And you might be thinking you need to create two different text objects. Well, you certainly can do that, but this uh, the string system also accepts uh, Unicode characters. So for example, if you need a new line, you can do slash n, and it will provide you with a new line. See, so it's taken that slash n, notice I don't see a slash n, it determines that as a carriage return. And here I've got my let's code physics here. And you notice that when I've aligned it in the center, it aligns it in the center of this whole object. So now I don't have to worry about readjusting it again because now I'm rotating about the center of the object itself. You can even get behind and see the words backwards. Pretty cool. Now, one of the shortcomings of the text object compared to the label that we mentioned earlier is that once you set this text value, you can't change it. So let's suppose I wanted to change this to let's watch Kyle Blaine plays instead. So I'm gonna to try to uh, change the text of this. Let's do control two. Error, text is read only, right? So it doesn't change it on here and it gives me an error that no, I can't go watch Kyle Blaine plays instead. I am stuck watching Let's Code Physics. So 
just keep that in mind. You can't change the text once it is set. If you want to be able to do that with some text on the screen, use the label function instead. I've got a video about that linked in the description below. But since this thing is 3D, you know, I can do all the other sorts of 3D stuff, like with all the other VPython objects. So like, for example, I can change the thing's height. So I can change this lcp.height. Uh, let's suppose we, well, first let's find out what its height is. Uh, the way height works, print lcp height, there we go. The way height works is it measures the height of one capital letter. So every letter is different, but the capitals, the uppercase letters are all kind of standardized in terms of their height. So each of these has a height of one. Let's see what happens if we change lcp.height equal to one half. And we'll, just for diagnostic purposes, we'll print lcp.height again. You notice that now the entire text gets squished. So everything is scaled as a fraction of an uppercase letter. So it has shrunk down the uppercase letter and all the lowercase letters get shrunk down as well. Uh, you can see this even more extreme. Let's cut this in half again to a quarter. And this is useful if you, you know, if, if you want to play around with the size of the text a little bit. If this is getting to the point of being difficult to read, but maybe you need to, you know, stretch them up taller for emphasis or something like that. Uh, you could certainly use this to make them taller. Let's uh, multiply them by a factor of two here. And there is my nice gangly let's code physics there. And again, all the letters and characters stretch up to match that. You can also change a factor called length. Length changes the length of the entire text. It's not just based on a single letter, it's based on the entire block of text. So let's take a look at what the length is right now. Currently the length is just under six. So let's try changing lcp.length to, uh, let's make it three, let's cut it in half. And you see here, everything gets squished together. So the letters are all thinner. Uh, so you can, so through height and length, you can change the, uh, you can change basically the, the size of this. You can stretch it like an accordion in, in two different dimensions. And you're probably guessing what comes next. We can also change the depth of these things. In order to change the depth, I have to actually set that in the function itself here, since this is built out of an extrusion. Um, I can't just stretch it back the way it was extruded. I need to actually set that up here. So you can't modify it down here. That's something we can work on in GlowScript development. Um, but what you can do is you can set depth up here. So let's say I want this to be super deep into the screen. I can set depth equals three. And there's my Let's Code Physics going way deeper than it was before. That is, that is a mighty impressive Let's Code Physics we've got there. Let me show you another cool trick. This isn't specific to uh, to the text, uh, but I learned recently that, I don't know why this never occurred to me before, that you can paste in Greek characters here. So I've copied a theta from Wikipedia onto here. Uh, and then I've also got a phi in my clipboard tray. So I'm gonna copy that off screen and paste it into here. And it accepts these because because they're just, you know, they're ASCII 2 characters, so they're just stored in there, but it didn't occur to me until recently that it would be able to process those. And there you've got a theta and a phi there. So if you need to, you know, write out your physics equations in 3D, uh, there you go, you've got your theta and your phi. And that works also in the label function. I didn't learn that until recently, so if you've watched this after the label video, this is a follow-up to the information in the label video there. Uh, let's suppose you're working with this block of text and you need to get some information about it. Like, let's suppose you want to place a sphere in the upper left corner, right? We set the position to be somewhere here in the center, so we'd have to figure out where that goes. That information is actually already encoded uh, because if I go in here and I say print lcp dot upper underscore left, that is a vector that VPython automatically calculates about LCP that tells me where the upper left corner is. It tells me it's at negative 1.5 in the X direction, two in the Y direction, and zero in the Z direction, which is pretty cool because what that means is I can create for myself a sphere, give it a position of LCP dot upper underscore left, right? This only works if I gave my text a name up here, LCP. And let's give it a radius of 0.2. And now when I press Control-2 to run, there's a sphere 
there in that upper left corner. Now you can see it appears in the back here because that's where it's extruding from. So the, the, the Z equals zero point is actually back here. So you could play around with the Z a little bit if you wanted to move it up here, uh, but you can do that with all four corners. So for example, I can place a sphere in the upper right corner. Right, so here a sphere, there a sphere. Uh, I can also do the lower corner. So let's change all of our uppers to lowers. Control two. And there you go. So you can use that to, you know, create a little border around here. You know, you could use that to set up a loop if you wanted to border it with spheres. Maybe you have like a some twinkling spheres, like a marquee board or something around this thing. Uh, or maybe you need to encase this in a box. You could use this to get the corners of the box that you need there. You can also specifically get the X values if you just need to know where the text starts and ends. You can also get the X values with lcp.start and lcp.end. Control 2. So this specifically gives you the points along the, uh, along the X axis there of where it's starting and ending, which is pretty cool. But of course, your text doesn't have to start and end on the x-axis, let's suppose you wanted to tilt this thing around a little bit. Uh, you can also change the text axis. So let's, let's actually get a new line in here. We'll say axis equals vector. Let's make it zero comma one comma zero. So along the y-axis, let's see what that does. And so here it's rotated my text so that it's moving along the y-axis. So axis tells you what direction does the text read along. So first it read along the x-axis, so its axis was one, zero, zero. Now it's reading along the y-axis going up this way. Let's see what happens if we make it read along the z-axis. Control two. And so you can see here, it's moving along the z-axis. So I have to rotate it around. And you see all those positions of upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right, they change in response to that axis. So once I have these spheres set up based on upper left, lower left, etc., they move along with the text, which is pretty cool. All right, let's reset this axis. I wanna show you one more thing, which is pretty cool. I can set this thing's property called billboard. You say, what the heck does that mean? If you set this equal to true, it's default values equal to false, but if you set this equal to true, the text does not move when you rotate the screen. So let's suppose you need a, a label out there in the screen. You can press control two on this. Let's suppose I needed this to be a label or something. When I go to rotate, the text doesn't move. The rest of the objects move, right? So these spheres I created move because I'm rotating the universe around them, but the text itself does not move while I rotate. Now what's interesting, maybe slightly problematic, is that the light sources move. And so you can see that, that, that the light sources that are kind of set in by default, they move around. So I guess if you wanted to, you know, pan a spotlight around your text, this is kind of a cool way to do it. But that kind of looks weird if I need this to stay legible. And so what the recommendation is that you turn this thing's emissive value equal to true. Because what that does is make the text always bright. So even as I rotate these things around, the text always stays bright. It's got its own constant light source on it there. So, you know, if you needed a caption on a video or something while you're rotating it, you can just set billboard equal to true, and then this thing stays in a constant position. It will zoom in and out for you, but it won't rotate with the rest of the stuff in the video. So anyway, that's a little bit about using vPython's text object. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.